Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. So today we have the KISS iFlight flight controller. This is a licensed KISS flight controller from iFlight. So it's going to be pretty cool and pretty interesting. So let's take a look at this guy. So first of all, uh, this is rocking an F3 processor. The board layout and the board design looks pretty good. However, there's a couple missing components and I think it's normal because I just watched other videos who have this. And they also have the same missing components such as this and a tantalum capacitor that was supposed to be there. I don't know why you would put a tantalum there. That would burn right out. Well, at least in the picture on the diagram. That's what it showed there. But uh, I don't know what's up with that. That's probably they removed it from testing. So this is the production model. That's for sure. And um, if we take a look at this, like I said, it's using an F3 flight controller and it has a built-in OSD right there into it. So that's pretty cool. And it only has a 5 volt regulator on board and it supports ESC telemetry. The proper ESC telemetry that I thought would be on Betaflight, which is your temperature and, you know, for ESC, for example, here's ESC number one would be here. All the information about it, ESC number two three and four however this one's a little bit different i think yeah their, or, their motor orientation is completely different it's a one two three four that's how it works and i think i have the board wrong yeah there we go uh so i think it would go in like this and then you have motors let's see starts one two three and four so they, that's how they, they go clockwise uh for this setup here and you can see telemetry and motor one or is that three you know it's motor one so overall, it's pretty well designed. It has a lot of, you know, pinouts and stuff, and it's pretty cool. And this is a huge 5-volt pad right there for something. I don't know what it's for, but you could use it. And here's a three, huge 3.3-volt regulator uh, if you're using some kind of a spectrum satellite receiver. So let's take a look at some of the things that it comes with. It comes with this thing. Now, this thing's pretty interesting. Uh, this thing has two functions at the current moment of time. One, it is used to program the OSD here. So that's pretty cool. And another thing is you don't have BL Heli pass through with this. So what you have to do is you have to use this guy to program all of your ESCs. So take that into consideration. And it does, they do provide it with the flight controller itself. So that's very nice to see. Now, I don't know if previous KISS flight controllers do come with a built-in OSD, but this one does. I have no idea. I've never touched a KISS product or even looked up a KISS product before. I just heard about it. That's it. So this is going to be pretty interesting. I have no idea how to set this up, but it's going to, it should be pretty simple and straightforward. Um, as we can tell here, the pads are pretty good. I, I really like it. They're, they're pretty large here. And supposedly this whole thing, it's obviously an all-in-one flight controller. It takes up to 200 amps of current going through it, supposedly. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm pretty sure I know why they removed this now. Because ever since I got my thermal camera and I've been doing a lot of testing and watching it, this area gets so freaking hot, it's, if it changes temperature like crazy. It goes up to like 100 degrees Celsius, drops back down to 40 in like a matter of seconds. It's pretty insane and dramatic here. So I really don't know if that's a good idea to keep that so close to this here. But I, I don't know. We'll figure it out as time goes by. Um, overall, the layout looks pretty nice. And uh, let's take a look at this. Maybe someone doesn't know how to set this up. Obviously, you put your power for your ESCs here. And I highly recommend your, let's just say your ESC signal uh ground so the black wire that's coming from not the power the, the black wire coming with the signal wire uh, i'd highly recommend you wrap it around the ground power of the esc and solder them together here so both wires here instead of just cutting it uh tr trust me you really want to ground your escs i know some of you might say oh i've never had a problem i never had a problem either and i never really noticed the problem until i actually started doing it on my four motor testing setup and then seeing some weird stuff happen and when i think back i'm like oh maybe that's why so from now on i'm grounding all of my esc signals so take that into consideration now here we have two missing components like i said right here and right here but they obviously removed them for some kind of a reason i wish i wish however they would have added a nine volt regulator on board this would have been a sick ass board here but overall it looks pretty good i can't really say much to it it does have s bus and all these kinds of things and, and uarts and um it's just a pretty cool little flight controller um it's a uh, yeah, massive, massive filtration here going on. I don't think there's a barometer on this guy. I don't think the KISS even, you know, does that kind of things. Um, but overall, I mean, it's pretty cool. It looks very well built. It looks very well designed. Kind of looks like a AirBot design in a way. It's, you know, the sharp, you know, that that's, that's how I know it's an AirBot product most of the time. They like it either flat or sharp, like squared. They don't like round. And you can kind of get an idea here. You can see that it's squared and sharp. Squared and sharp. I could be wrong, but this is what I truly believe here. 
And uh, this is a very nice addition. They, it's, it's actually a must to, to add this with it if you really want to sell it. So let's put these guys to the side. Let's see what else it comes with here. So let's go ahead and pop this guy open. It's pretty well packaged, actually. So they do give us an XT60 connector that's already prepared. I really like seeing that. Very nice fat gauge wire they're using here. 12 gauge wire, silicone wire. So that's very good to see. And uh, if we take a look here, we have our other, you know, connectors and stuff. Let's get an idea here. So as I know, one of these will be to program the OSD, and I think the OSD is programmed through one of these here. It's all in the documentation. They do provide you with a pretty detailed uh, manual here. It's just a one-piece manual. So if we take a look at this, um, you would obviously connect the USB to this little thing here, and um, right there. There we go. So you would connect the USB to that. So it'll tell you, for example, if you want to connect BL Heli, you would connect your USB, and then that's how you would set that up as follows. Motor one, two, three, four would be on this one right there, the bottom end, and then you have ground, and um, I get. But I know you'd have to power these. I don't know how the hell you're gonna power them. They're gonna need power, so you're gonna have to. I think also you must connect um, power to your quad cup. This is actually very annoying, kind of. It'll be, but yeah. So take that into consideration. So if we take a look down here, for some reason, if you wanted to update your. Uh, OSD for the KISS, you would get this X loader program, I guess, I'll connect it via USB and use the bottom pinouts to the flight controllers pinouts here. So I wish there was a pass through from this to this to the e to the ESCs, but there isn't. So you'd have to disconnect all, all of these signals and connect it to this while keeping the power on the flight controller to actually initialize BL Heli to connect to the ESC. So you have to take that into consideration. If you can't connect it and you're just getting, you're just going crazy, that you have to apply power to the ESCs. And here we have a, just a full diagram of how to set everything up here. Um, it's it's pretty straightforward and very easy. So this is what I was talking about. This is a huge tantalum capacitor. I mean, in the diagram, that's what it seems like here. And that's what I was telling you, it looked like it's, it was missing, but I guess it's normal. We probably removed it here, whereas it's by the battery battery pads right there. You can see that it should be right there. So if you take a look at it, see that would be here, and then if we take a look, that would be there. But none of the boards that I've seen online have them, so they probably removed them for a reason here. Um, but overall, the board looks very nice. I really can't say much about it just yet until we actually put it on a quad and go take it out for a flight. It looks like it's very well built. It looks very clean, and um, that's all I could really say, guys. So I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. And uh, I'm just going to have to end it here. And uh, if you guys have any questions or any suggestions, feel free to let me know. And please consider joining my Patreon. It will help this channel keep going and bringing you the awesome tests that we want. Like, I mean, we, we need, to be honest, to know what, what to buy and what not to buy. And um, that's it, guys. I really hope you enjoyed it. And I will see you next time. See you guys. Take care.